So now we're down on the beach at Carkeek Park again. Cold. It's a relative term. True. And we want to demonstrate the idea of a sentence form and its instantiations. So, Mark, we have here one, two, three, four sentences of TL, four well formed sentences of our truth functional language. Mm -hmm. What do they have in common? Well, they're all disjunctions, and I can tell that because the main connective for each is the wedge. Uh -huh. So they're all in, in this or that sentence. They're all either ors. Yeah. Um, That's about it. They have letters in them. Yeah. They're blowing in the wind. So what they have in common is w what we call in logic their form, their structure. And we represent that structure with variables. So let P be a boldface capital and that is the variable and let Q be a boldface capital and that is a variable and P and Q are variables ranging over sentences of TL and then we put a wedge between the two and this is this is called the form of these sentences it represents the logical structure that they all have in common P wedge Q says let P be some well formed formula then there's a wedge, and then let Q be some well-formed formula, and that's the structure or form that these all have. These are said to be instances of this form, and so that's an instance of this form. And we define an instance this way. We say a sentence of TL, such as this, or this, or this, is an instance of a form, for instance, this form. If the sentence of TL can be produced from the form by replacing the variables in the form, with sentences of TL and making no other changes. So if I replace the P with A, and I replace the Q with B, and I carry the, the wedge down, in other words, I make no other changes, I can, I can turn this into this. And that shows that this is an instance of this form, or that this is the form of this sentence. And then how would you demonstrate that this is an instance of this form then, Mark? Well. <coughs> The A ampersand B could be replaced with a P, and this could replace that. So this would be like P wedge Q, just like this is P wedge Q. Mm -hmm. so it has the same pattern, the same form. This is a little more complicated looking than this, and H triple bar O is a little more complicated looking than Q, mm -hmm. but it's basically P or Q, P or Q, same form. So it's a disjunction with two disjuncts, mm -hmm. same pattern. That, that shows that this is an instance of this form. Mm -hmm. So let me just do one more. So I take P and I replace it with not E. And I'll take Q and I'll replace it with not Z. Okay. So the Q got replaced, the P got replaced, but the wedge carries down. Mm -hmm. So when you go from the form to the instance, the connectives in the form and their scope stays the same. And then the only thing that gets replaced is the variables. And since we replaced P with this and Q with this and kept the connective the same, this counts as an instance of this form, and this counts as the form of this sentence of TL. Does that make sense? Uh, to me. Okay. Yep. Uh, notice that the instance can have more connectives in it than the form, sure. can't it? Yeah. But and not this, vice versa. This could be a mile and a half long. This could be a whole bunch of stuff, as long as that's the main connective. This could be a mile and a half long over here too, but if we have something, wedge something, and that's the main connective, it's still going to be the same instance. It's an instance of this form. Yeah. And so actually, um, the instance, there's an infinite number of possible instances of this form, aren't there? Mm -hmm. But in order to be an instance of this form, it has to be something, and then wedge, and then something. Okay, so that gives us the idea of a sentence form. Let's do an argument form okay. quickly here. As long as we're on forms. So we'll talk briefly about argument forms. So suppose I have an English argument. Since we're at the beach, we'll have a swimming example. Let's do it. I swam here once. Did you? I did. It's cold. You want to describe your swimming? It was cold. It was very cold. Is that all? Colder than well, it's good enough for today. Okay. So the argument will be if 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 Ann swims, then Bob swims, but Bob's not going to swim. Therefore, in conclusion, Ann's not going to swim. So in symbols, we'll say 
you know, if A, then B, right? If Ann swims, then Bob swims. Mm -hmm. That'd be the first premise. Second premise, but Bob's not going to swim. And the conclusion will be separated by a slanted slash. The slanted slash means therefore, and it signals the conclusion's about to begin. And so everything before the slanted slash are premises, and then after is the conclusion. Let's say that, well, I'm, I inferred that Anne would not swim, right? So there's our argument. <clears throat> this is an argument written in our symbolic language. These are sentence constants. And now we can, re we can just write the form of this argument. Um, what's the form? P horseshoe Q. If P then Q, where P and Q are boldface capital, thus are variables ranging over sentences of TL. Mm -hmm. Next one would be tilde Q. Tilde Q. Mm -hmm. Oh, we did it this way. Yeah. And then we would conclude from this that tilde P is the case, tilde P. Mm -hmm. And so, since these are variables, this is called an argument form. This is a description of an argument structure or an argument pattern. It's a form without any content at all, isn't it? Yeah, because these don't stand for anything in particular, the variables. This could be A, it could be tilde A, it could be A triple bar Z. So whatever this thing is, I would need to see right here. Mm -hmm. Whatever is here, I would need to see here. There would just be a tilde in front of this one and a tilde in front of that one. Mm -hmm. so, so then, um, if this is a variable and this is a variable, this is called the form of this argument. And this is called an instance of this form because we could replace the variables, we could replace P with A and we could replace Q with B and turn this into this. Therefore, this is an instance of this form. This is the form of this instance. And so, again, this describes a pattern that an argument can follow. And then here's an argument that follows that pattern. Mm -hmm. But there are potentially an infinite number of arguments that could follow this pattern, couldn't they? Aren't there? So we'll say, so they had not E, horseshoe not G. That's an instance of the form P horseshoe Q, isn't okay. it? Yep. And then not Q is the second premise. That would be not not G. G. Mm -hmm. So that's an instance of the negative Q. And then what you would be getting would be tilde, tilde E. Tilde tilde E. Right. So P was replaced by, excuse me, in this case P was replaced by tilde E, Q by tilde G. So now Q is replaced by tilde G and there's a tilde applied. And so this is an instance of this, this is an instance of this, and the conclusion is tilde P. The P was replaced by tilde E and we carry the tilde over and that shows that this is an instance of this form. But this is an instance of this form too. So we see that there are many different instances for a, a given form of reasoning. The form, again, has no content because it's not about any particular subject matter. This argument's about swimming and swimmers. This one might be about people cooking hot dogs or something. So these have content. They're about certain things. There's no content in the form. It's pure abstract structure. And the inference rules for our natural deduction system will be formulated using argument forms as their backbones. So that's enough on forms.